Welcome to Electron Line. So what is the Earth's non-greenhouse average temperature? A lot of the radiation that reaches the surface of the Earth and gets re-rated back into space, well, a lot of that is being held back by the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, keeping the Earth at a nice, comfortable temperature. Now, if those greenhouse gases weren't there, all that radiation would go right back into space unhindered and the temperature of the Earth would be a lot colder than it is today. So what would that temperature be of the Earth if those greenhouse gases weren't there? And of course, it's not that easy of a calculation because we need to make some assumptions. But let's start with the basics. First of all, the Earth is being radiated upon by the Sun. Only half the surface receives sunlight at any given time. The other half, is, of course, is nighttime. So also, we need to take into account that the, that the surface of the Earth is, well, since it's a sphere, on different places, the angle of the incoming radiation is different, and so it's more effective when it's straight perpendicular to the surface and less effective when it's at an angle. But essentially, the amount of radiation received by the Sun is, is as if the Earth was simply a circle so a flat circle, and so that the area of that flat circle is simply equal to pi r squared. So that is the amount of energy that is being received over an equivalent surface area, equivalent equal to the cross-sectional area of the Earth. So I have the cross-section, I'll turn it over a little bit at an angle, so you can see that the area of that cross-section area would be pi r squared, and that's the energy received by the Sun. And of course, then the Earth radiates out in all directions from the surface of a sphere at nighttime and during the daytime and so that area would then be equal to 4 pi r squared so effectively the amount of radiation from the earth is four times the surface area than the amount than the incoming radiation being received by the sun so that's the first thing secondly we need to take into account that the amount of heat coming from the sun and i have it right here per square meter is 1361 watts per square meter, but about half of that radiation is either reflected by the clouds, reflected by the snow and the ice, reflected by some of the water, and also reflected by the rock formations and rocks. Some rocks do reflect quite a bit of the energy back into space. So that means that on average, about half of that energy makes it down to the surface. Then we need to take into account that a fair amount of that is being absorbed by the oceans where the energy then, then um, evapor evaporates the, the water of the oceans and that then through convection goes into the upper atmosphere and then gets sent back out into space. So somewhere between 680 watts per square meter and 340 watts per square meter is the amount of heat that's being converted into radiation and sent back into, into space. And so we're going to work with those two numbers to kind of come up with a, an average number of the temperature of the Earth, what it would be if there were no greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. So this is just a very basic approach. If you want to do a real good job, we need to take into account a lot more things in our model. But this is a good start to see what it would be. So next what we're going to do is we're going to put in the equation. Of course, we start with the equation where dq dt is equal to E sigma A times temperature to the fourth power and converting that to temperature. So the temperature of the Earth would be equal to the fourth root of dq dt divided by, that would be E sigma and the surface area. All right, now. What we're going to do here is we're going to start out with the first number. We're going to take half of all the incoming radiation, assuming it reaches the surface, and it's re-radiated back out. Of course, that's not quite the model, but let's start with that number first and see what we would get. So T is equal to the fourth root of dQ dt, which would be three, uh, 680, 680 watts per square meter. And of course, that's assuming that the area, that total area that we receive from the sun is pi r squared. And so let's go ahead and multiply the times pi r squared for the total surface area or equivalent surface area of the Earth divided by E, let's call E equal to 1. Sigma is 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8. That would be watts per square meter Kelvin to the fourth power. And then the area of the Earth that would be then, of course, equal to 4 pi r r squared. And since we're using pi r squared in the numerator and pi r squared in the denominator, we don't actually have to know the radius of the Earth. That then cancels out. 
and we have 1 over 4 for that equivalence of surface area of incoming radiation for, versus outgoing radiation. And so the temperature is then going to be equal to, that would be the average surface temperature of the Earth. Of course, it changes between winter and summer, but this is simply the average temperature relative to what it normally is with greenhouse gases, which is 59 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about 15 degrees Celsius because of the greenhouse gases. So let's see what we get. So we have 680 divided by 5.67 e to the 8 minus divided by 4 equals, take the square root, take the square root, and there it is, 234. So this is equal to 234 Kelvin. All right, 234 Kelvin. How much is that in Celsius? So let's subtract 273 from that. So minus 273, and that would be equal to minus 39 degrees Celsius. So it's equal to minus 39 degrees Celsius. So that's quite a shock. The average temperature of the world just purely using this simplistic model would be minus 39 degrees Celsius. Now we know that if we add some additional components to this model, that the true result would be somewhere about minus 20 degrees Celsius. That would be a more accurate result that takes into account all the convection currents, the, the, the evaporation of the oceans and all that. But, so from a purely perspective of that's the incoming radiation, outgoing radiation, and, and make it a very simple model. The Earth would be very, very cold if it wasn't for greenhouse gases. Even at minus 20 degrees Celsius, that is still a very cold Earth. And then, of course, if we change that to 340 watts per square meter because of all these other effects that we want to account for, we would end up with even a much smaller number than that. In other words, the Earth would be then much, much colder. But this gives us at least a good concept to work with to see that the Earth would be relatively cold if there were no greenhouse gases. So luckily, we have those and we're comfortably warm because of it, and that is how it's done. Something like that. Just purely scientific. Nothing but. Nothing but.